If you are familiar with Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, then you might want to know that he has a slightly more obscure uh, mental technique, a mental exercise known as the Invisible Counselor's Technique or the Invisible Counsel Technique that when he meditates before he sleeps at night. So what he's teaching is basically he would invite a group of imaginary people alive, dead or fictional that he respects, that he wished to emulate and be like. He would invite these people to his imaginary council meeting where he would have dialogues with them, have conversations with them, like consult on them. And the reason he do that is because even though it's a mental exercise, he's trying to connect with them, research on them, and ultimately absorb and acquire all of their positive character traits that led them to success. So he wants to be an accumulation or an agglomeration of all these people, their character traits, absorb all of them and become a magnet of success himself. So he didn't exactly give a lot of specific instructions on how to do it. So maybe today I'll just share how I do it, okay? And if you want to know more on um, his actual technique, all you need to do is just to do a search on Google and a lot of a lot of interpretations and the actual technique itself will come out. So I don't want to share what is already out there. I want to share a personal and unique perspective of how I apply Napoleon Hill's invisible counselor's technique. <clears throat> so here goes. At first, my counsel only had one person. And you know, I used to teach martial arts and the martial art that I specialized in was Jeet Kune Do. And the creator of this martial art, Jeet Kune Do, was Bruce Lee. So naturally, my first counsel meeting, the first person I invite was Bruce Lee. Because I wanted to know if I was able to represent his art well. So at first the questions were purely technical. I was like, Bruce, how should I stand? How should my stance be? How should I punch? How should I kick? And <clears throat> it was purely at a technical level, right? Now as time passed, my counsel grew. I invited more and more martial artists to my nightly meeting. And it grew from 5 to 10 to 25, 30 and more. It's been 6 years since I've been doing this exercise, on and off, but consistent. And what I found was that, was that there was a trend. So you know when we meditate, there is a phase where we are conscious, right? And then later on, we kind of fall asleep. In between, there is a semi-conscious phase, right? Where you're kind of awake, but you're dozing off. You're there, but you're not there. For me, that is when the imagination starts to take over a little bit and the strange things start to happen according to what Napoleon Hill kind of described, right? The mutations start to happen and the character will sometimes take on a life of, of their own and say like strange things or do strange things. That's when I have a notebook on standby and I would awake, get myself awake and take notes and document what happened in those meditation sessions. Why do I do that? Because that is, to me, that is my understanding of maybe that's how my subconscious is trying to send me some messages or hints or direction for me to move forward in order to achieve my next breakthrough. It's just that you know, your sub subconscious doesn't communicate directly. It sends you hints, it sends you messages. For me, it comes in a form of visual, mental images. And that is why those little, little um, phases where I'm semi-conscious and things happen inside my meditation, those are extremely important to me. I will write them down. The next day when I'm awake, I'll start to decode. And a lot of times it led to tremendous breakthrough in my martial arts training. It led to a lot of important insight and understanding into my development as an athlete as well. I went from just being a, an average amateur to becoming a national athlete here in Singapore. That was my breakthrough and that was how I applied these uh, Napoleon Hill invisible counselors technique. And I don't just do it. 
The way that I do it is over time, I build more structure. As my counsel grew into those nightly meeting sessions, it became more structured, more formal, more serious, more professional, and above all, I had a strong why. Because if you just invite the characters that you want onto your nightly meetings, then it's just mental, it's just intellectual, there's no real purpose to it. So if you want to do this technique, your why has to be strong. And here was my why. You know that I'm a martial artist, right? So I invited a lot of martial artists to come on board my council. And here was my why. Okay, I wasn't doing it for myself. I was there to perpetuate the spirit of martial arts for everybody. Because if your why is selfish, it's going to be very hard to move forward. So not only must your why be clear and strong, it must benefit one and all. Because you don't know about my story, and maybe one day I'll make a story on, on my why. My thing is to empower people through martial arts, to go from weak to strong, to go from ignorant to knowledgeable, so that you can become strong mentally and physically. That's why I'm doing all the other Master Key System videos as well, right? That is my thing, empowerment. So because of my why, I invited all these successful martial artists, past, present and imaginary, to come on board my meeting so that together we could create something that can perpetuate the legacy, the spirit, the values of martial arts. Am I making any sense right here? That was my why. And the other thing is, apart from having a strong and clear why that must benefit one and all, you must also be respectful to the members of your council. I know that they are imaginary. Or are they? So even then, don't just poof, end the meditation and kick them away, okay? Be respectful because somehow, your whatever you do in these meditation sessions, sooner or later, it's going to manifest and come up in your real life. I don't know why, I don't know how, but that's how it is. So I want you to be congruent. If you're respectful in real life, then be as respectful and as serious to these characters in your nightly meetings, in your meetings with your invisible counselors. You understand what I mean? Maybe just speak to them respectfully as though as they are your teachers. Maybe introduce them to one another. You know, you never know what could happen, right? Just play around with imagination and take it seriously. Play seriously. Now, am I making sense with this invisible counselors technique? It's an extremely niche but powerful technique that I encourage you to use at least once a week, give it a shot and then come back and tell me in the comments how did it go for you because you must persist. I did it for one week, two weeks, I was like, it doesn't work but by now, it's been, I first started in 2012, now it's been six years, I can tell you that my, my entire council, it starts to become strong, it starts to mutate, it takes on a being of its own and you will take on the characters and values and qualities and traits of all these people that you invite to your invisible counselors meeting. Now, am I making any sense? If I did, like this video, comment, subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the notification bell so that every time I make a video, you know. And if you know any friends that could benefit from this video, go ahead and share them this link. And until next time, I will see you here.